Hey YouTube, here's a guitar I've not seen before, I don't have you, this is a Jarrock, or Yarrock, it's like, are you into music? Yarrock, yeah so this is, um, I think it was, it said it was a Dutch importer, so kind of, kind of know what it is, this is my pal who was after a Roadstar and instead he's found this, um, it's obviously not a billion miles away, from this, um, there's a few a few things are different. So I've got I've got some theories about this, but no actually no actual knowledge. Obviously, you have to you have to do guesswork, which is part part of the fun about such things like this. This I think is more similar to the Ibanez Roadster Comet model. That one there, that red one, that's a 1986 one. In 1986, they kind of made it more rounded, you know, they put the sort of more, more chamfers on it, made it a bit lighter. This is an earlier Roadster, an RS series there, Maple Necks as well. Um, I think it has been altered a little bit at the factory. My theory is somebody's ordered these. And it's not quite, see the Ibanez often have a wee sort of hook there. Kind of like if you just sanded the Ibanez hook a little bit more there and there, and the headstock as well is not the same as the Roadsters, but it's like if you cut a bit more off just to make it slightly different. I think it's where this comes from. Um, so, I don't know, if I had a look at the blazer. Yeah, so the first, the original one's the blazer. Um, well, this is, what what I've heard online is the original Ibanez Strat home make thing. Obviously they made copies, like very much like that Tempest, but this is a, an original design, even though it's a it's an improvement on a Strat. But the first one's the road stairs. They couldn't do the Fender one piece maple neck they didn't have the tooling to be able to do that, the Fujigen factory. So these were actually made by a company called Dyna. If I can see the dust coming off this, it's disgusting. I need to put strings on it. Um, so these were actually outsourced to Dyna. And then when it, only for a couple of years, this is the Blazer series. And then the Road Stars come out around about the same time as Fender Japan. And Fender kind of, I think, kind of helped invest in Fujigen or whatever and gave them a machine that would make one piece make maple necks. So, the earliest Fender Japan guitars have one piece maple necks, but they didn't do this. I think um, then after that, they had the ability to do it. So that's why the Blazers are kind of the odd one out. But then they went to the Road Star, which I think were a bit more like this. And this would be one of the more sort of the lower end models because it's just a hard tail. You know, you get ones with like expensive trims, even though I totally have the hard trim over one of the Pro Rockers or something like that, which are kind of like Floyd Roses, but they're now forty years old. And you can't really get bits for them and they wear out and stuff. So basically something like that. Even if you've got bits missing, you can just put any hardtail on. It's fine. The Ibanez Pro Rocker things leave a funny shaped hole. It's not like you can just go, oh, the bridge is knackered. I'll just put a Floyd Rose in. It's like, no, you have to kind of build it up and route it. And, uh, uh, so it doesn't have that. Um, it's got the same tuners, identical tuners to my Tempest there. Um, the bridge is actually not exactly the same. It's actually quite similar to this guitar. This is my... I know it's disgusting. Imagine having a guitar like this. Even the headstock's not exactly hugely different. My Vantage Avenger in factory glitter purple. The reason I looked this out is because it's uh, glitter purple, but also that bridge is not identical, but very similar to this one. Um, the difference being the screws that hold this one on are kind of in the middle, whereas on this one it's got like four screws on the outside, um, but it's the same saddles, it's the same idea. Solid brass bridge, top loader. Um... The pickups I thought were the same as around the wee Roadster, the Ibanez Super 5s, but they're not because they come in at like 4K and these are like 6K, so they're, they've are they just got the same covers on them. Um, so, three single coils and a phase switch. Yeah, it's definitely a more powerful pickup. Position four. Yeah, but I've, I've not actually done any work on this because it's actually plain just now. Middle pickup. Very clean, isn't it? Four. Middle bridge pickup.
interesting as well with the uh, fretboard radius. This has got the seven and a quarter inch radius, so this is more like uh, well the Blazer is as well, or the, the the original vintage Strats. Now, I think it's the only custom shops you would get with such a such a radius board. Um, <laughs> modern guitars are more like nine and a half for the curvy one and twelve for a Gibson, whereas this is a seven and a quarter. So it's it is a bit it's a bit different feeling. Um, once you get used to it, it's totally great. I mean, I like the first guitar I ever had with it was the Squire Bullet, the Gender Japan one, and um, it was like, oh wow, and then ended up with quite a few of them. And it's like now, now I don't really tend to notice. It does mean you can't get the action down quite as low, and you have to be a bit more curved when you're doing the saddles, which this one hasn't done. That's kind of why mm. it doesn't look like the action's that low because the E string's not that low, but in the middle it's too low. Very bit spanky. But one of the things he wants, the guy wants me to do is um, he wanted me to just take out the phase switch, which actually my blazer has as well. Um, that was a very thing for a couple of years, not very many years. So there's position two. So you get these two pickups, then you can phase them. It was the same in position four. You get the it's even more. I'm gonna say even worse, but. But I used to put um, face switches in strats just because I was more for like, see when you're playing um, like in, in the loop pedal, you could kind of, using the face sound, it's, you can play it like an acoustic. It's kind of, it's kind of got almost sounds like a piezo acoustic. Turn it on. Is that ridiculous? That's ridiculous. Hmm. Bass strings are a lot bit quiet. The pickups actually sit a bit low. Won't be another package. Um, they wanted me to get rid of that switch because it, which I, which I do kind of get. Apart from that one situation when you can kind of use it sort of as, obviously when it's strumming away on its own, it doesn't really sound that much like acoustic. Once you put bass and stuff on it, it's in any sort of mix. It's an acceptable, sounds more like an acoustic than any any other sound you can get out of a normal guitar. Um, but I used, I'm going to put in a Gilmore switch instead, which will just basically give you just hot wire on the neck pickup, so you get outside cause and then all three pickups on for another two sounds which are probably more useful than that thin one um, even with the distortion on well I mean if that's the sound you're after I guess maybe funk or something but I mean again it's one of those things that maybe Building up a loop, having a big mix, having that thin sound there. It's just I can't really see me ever really wanting to use it. I had on this before. So it actually feels a wee bit like, in fact, do you know what's very, it's very like my Squire Bullet because it's kind of the same thing. I feel that it's a wee bit thinner here. Like it, maybe it's just because I'm used to looking at a strap, whereas the Squire Bullet's very like this as well. And it's a hard tail. So I mean, it's got a lot to do with it. It doesn't have the, well, it's got a contour in the back, it doesn't have the contour in the front, which immediately gives you a slightly different, 
makes a huge difference to the feel of a guitar this bit suddenly makes everything feel like a telly when it's just square rather than having a contour and kind of changes the angle you hold it a little bit <laughs> scratchy vocal control but I'll go ahead and fix these things. But what, what you're not getting here is the colour of this thing. Um kind of looks a bit grey there, it's not at all. It's the most um uh, the other light that light very kind of not really. It's kind of seven up can. It's a very, very vibrant um Seven up can green, even though it doesn't look it here, and it's it's pure super sparkly. Uh, the reason I kind of dug this out is because it's actually it's a kind of similar thing, and this is 1982 because it's actually got a serial number. This is a Vantage, um, and it's the same. You can't really see there. You, you don't. You can, at certain angles, you can see it. See the 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 glitteriness. I mean, these things look amazing in the person. They just don't look quite right in videos. This one. Yeah, I've got my super. Yeah, not not really getting it, but it's, it's it's much greener. It's much more of a seven up can green. It's actually quite heavy, I would have said for the guitar. But this is before Ibanez didn't use basswood at this point because it was Alan Holdsworth model that was the first Ibanez first guitar ever really made out of basswood, and then now they all are all the Ibanez anyway. Three point seven. That's so it's, it's slightly heavier than average. I'm going average is about three point five, three point six. So slightly heavier. But I think maybe the reason I'm feeling it's a bit heavier is because it's very similar to my wee Red Star and it's lighter uh, rather than it being similar to any other guitar. But it's funny how... Wh why? I'd, like, I've got no issues here. A Telecaster. No, oh, bad choice. Okay, a Telecaster's just single coil pickups. I don't look at that and go up here, oh, I wish I had like a humbucker in it or something like that. Whereas a Strat, somehow as soon as you get three single coils, suddenly it's like, pure, oh, <sighs> It doesn't have a humbucker in it. Oh, how can we do that? And it's like, why? It's just I think I think I've now got to the stage of I want, I want the humbucker as a safety blanket. <laughs> um, because I mean, even looking at something like the Corker, right? It's got two humbuckers in it, but it's got six sounds on it, and definitely the ones that I use, the the two where there's only two sounds that are actually humbuckered, and those are not the ones I use very often. They're, they're still there, but I don't use them that often, so you get away with. Uh, you know, it's like, um, I, would, I, I suggested, um, I didn't think it would be possible, I was right, um, to do my cascading mega bucker in this, where it kind of puts them together and gives you a triple bucker, but these pickups are all the same wine, so if you put them in two in series, it does put them in series, but they're not humbuckering, because one of them, one, I'm cancelling, because one of them isn't reverse wines and reverse polarity, that wasn't really a thing until later on. Uh, but I mean, I would totally have this over most roadsters, and I know it, it, it was just a buy it now. On, it wasn't even a buy it now, it was an auction on eBay, and I think he got the first the first bid on it, and he paid basically half what uh, you, you pay for a roadster. And ultimately, it's the same one, it's the same guitar. Okay, this is the one I've got there, it's the humbucker one, and it's got the trem on it, but there was a one that was this. this um, guitar like this that's the thing we're missing now it's like you're looking at the guitars that are probably in, a, in a, an equivalent price range this you know the sort of four or five hundred pound guitars aren't genuinely thought of as for gigging yes you can gig them obviously but guitars like this were for gigging you bought one of these because you were gigging you didn't buy you know it's like because the, the beginner guitars you got really weren't they weren't good enough to be gigged whereas this is like proper working musician pub cover bands all over the place were buying these because they would try this and they would try the Fender Strat which would be three times the price of price something like that and then they would have this which is 
a little bit modern. I'm going for it. it's about 1982, 1983, just by the fashion of it. And what you're getting is a totally rock solid and very good guitar. It's also in really good condition. Um, and I think this is absolutely wonderful. Um, I probably, I, probably I'd, I would have no issue with changing the, the switch to a Dave Gilmore because you can always put it back. There's nothing. I'll just use the same switch. I'll just change the wires about to make it a Gilmore switch rather than a a phase switch, which gives you those are sounds you're going to use more often. Then fair enough. I wouldn't count, consider that a mod. Same as a modded mine. I changed the push pull pot or the push push pot for a better push push pot because you couldn't see when it was in and when it was out. Um, so no, there's no point. In, there's a thing. Oh, you got to keep it original. Now, yeah, I get it. Totally. Don't cut big holes and put you know other pickups in, but. So, you know, he's like, oh, I've got my, my original Ferrari. Oh, you still get the tyres from the 80s? Yeah. You know, you don't, you still need different oil and different, you know, different strings and replaceable parts. But yeah, it's not a one-piece neck. As I said, I don't think I got that far, but this is a, it's a, a separate fingerboard. Somebody, some people reckon they can tell the difference. I can't, but I like the idea of a one-piece just... For the fact of liking the idea, there's no, I don't, there's nothing really to back it up apart from the idea of it being one piece of wood is just cool. Um, I fit very much the same. I have to tell you that that's a one piece piece of walnut just because it's unlikely to find a bit of walnut that big. I don't think anyone could ever really manufacture a line of guitars because I don't think there's that many pieces available at that size. Um, so I still have to tell you, does it make any difference to sound? I don't think so. I don't think it makes any difference being made of walnut. No idea what this one's made of. Um, it might be uh, strips. So I'm going for Fuji Gen, probably, possibly Chushin. I don't know. That's I think that's Chushin or is it Matsumoku? We don't we don't really know about these things. I mean, I get a comment in one of my washburn videos going how the person was totally disgusted with me the way they had some of these wonderful guitars. And if he had those guitars, he would know where everything was made and who made it. And by researching it on the internet, and you're just like, who knows? Somebody will know. Somebody will remember. They won't for a couple of years. Some fact, some guitar shop in Denmark uh, imported these, and probably that was it. And maybe they, they sold them for a few years, and then they went away. Probably, possibly, I don't know. It's also probably when I've seen Jarrock guitars. Well, I know where this one was made, but just because, you know, this Jarrock is an Ibanez Roadster, basically, um, with wee bits different, so it's not exactly the same, but a wee bit extra sanding. Right, what do you think, Mister White Snake? You totally have bought it, wouldn't you? So would I. Let's be honest. Um, I never really saw it. If it basically, if, if see if it had, uh, the, the electrics hadn't worked in it, it would probably have gone for a bit less, and I would probably ended up buying it. Um, but these are th these are the things that I find, and to be honest, it's more interesting than a roadster. You can try and find, you know, who knows what this is. I mean, I know because I've got it in my hands, but you, there is a wee bit of a risk when you buy these things because you know. So is it's a blazer. It's like well, kind of no. It could just be a copy, which. In some ways, it sort of is, but you can tell just by looking at the quality of it, it's the same as a Fuji Gen neck. Anyway, because um, at the time, remember in Japan, they were all fighting over who would make the best guitar, not who makes the most money from selling the cheapest guitar for the most money. Um, even I mentioned, I'm, I'm totally not taking the taking the bait at all. Someone had suggested my um, Ibanez RG, the one that uh, Jen had painted, the one with the sort of flowers, the called the bug that one it's got like 2000 uh, likes on our page um and someone says up here oh it looks at the top of the range what kind of guitars that looks at the top of the range harley benton and i had to go like, up here oh harley benton my least favorite guitar brand ever it's an ibanez blah 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 and in the comments below like, nothing wrong with I the harley benton for the price and then another one going oh is this a joke lol for the price harley benton are pure amazing you're just like it's like even as a joke, I'd say like up here, yeah, try and find someone that's, and you know, something that says they're good without saying for the price in it. And that's not where it comes in. This one, for the price, is a really good guitar. This one, regardless of what price it is, is a really good guitar. You know, you, is this a good guitar? Yes, it's excellent. Oh, was it expensive? No. Oh, this is shite. This is, but it looks good, but this guitar is fucking awful. Oh, oh, but it, but it, it only costs £170 new. Oh, really? It's good for the price, then. If you compare this to... Oh, I'll look at the the Gibson Les Paul at two and a half grand, and I'll compare it to the Harley Benton one, which is only 200 quid. Oh, it's good for the price, but it's actually, you can actually buy a guitar that's good. It's a good guitar, not 
good for the price. I mean, obviously, the price of these things is rock bottom, you know. Better than anything you can get new for 500 quid without even thinking about it. Better than, it's a thousand pound guitar, this, um, to, get, to get something the same as it. But not as interesting. And the colour, I'm, so, I'm really sorry, David, the, the, the colour's not showing up in this video. It looks kind of faded. It's not. It's the most vibrant and most deepest green. Emerald. It's emerald. That's the colour it is. Yeah, so I'm just going to swap that. Switch over and give a wee bit of, uh, a bit of a switch clean. And then um, do the radius on your... Because that's the problem, because I was looking at it, like, I think the action's a bit low, I'm looking at it going, no, no, the action on that string's not low, no, but that's because it's not set for the curve, so the action in the middle, the string's too low, and the outside it's a bit high, so I just need to make it do a bit more of that, um, rather than being flat. But as it is, it's like one of these things that, see, when you get a guitar that's of this level, even when they're not really set up well, they still sound good and are still playable. You know, pick up a, a modern Squire or something like that that's set up the way this is, it doesn't play. This is this has got a notch or two to go up, um, but it's already playing. Rock on! I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to be rebuilding my pedal board. Um, I was going to do it first, but I figured I'll do this first, then I'll sit. I'm going to maybe do a video on it, just how I'm going to set up my pedal board. Um, and then I'm going to take this. Well, I might do this first. I'm going to take this uh, switch out, sort it. But I mean... Again, it's just a, it's a bit of a more, it's a more interesting than a road star, uh, and it is, it is, it is. I mean, you argue about some bits being slightly off, you know, just change is not quite the same headstock, but the actual bare bones of it, it is exactly the road star is it an RS one hundred or whatever, whatever it is, the one that's got the three single coil pickups. It's pretty much exactly that guitar, um, and those guitars are awesome. They're now starting to. Fetch the sort of prices it should be, kind of going for sort of four or five hundred quid uh, for the sort of this this level model, um, more expensive for the fancy ones, but and they're just that that's what they should be. It's like oh, that's the kind of same sort of prices you can get a Mexican Fender for. Yeah, put it up against a Mexican Fender. It's it's not just like a it's not one of those. Oh, it's maybe a wee bit better. It's a lot better. It's like if, if that. This would be pretty pain for the money from. Sorry. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> 